Good Monday afternoon. Jerry Miller, thank you kindly for joining us. Welcome to the I Love Seville show. It's great to be with you. It's a, a loaded show. Just so much content, so much heart and passion and raw feeling in today's program. I'm so excited to connect with you through the I Love Seville network where we're live in Charlottesville. We're live in the Commonwealth, the country, and the world. Today's program, I think, is going to be impactful. It's going to be impactful. We had a protest, and we've had protests over a few days in Charlottesville. And I want to go straight to it. I've been in this community for 20 years. Came here as a first year, pretty much knowing nothing. This community has helped make me who I am. I'm forever grateful. And this weekend, I went in and I was really nervous. I don't know about you guys. I was watching the stuff on Thursday, Thursday evening on CNN. I was watching it on Friday morning. I was watching it on Friday night. I'm sure we all were. And, and we see, first off, a murder by someone who's supposed to serve and protect citizens in the community. And it was undoubtedly murder. We know that. Sickening. Disgusting. And at a time in America and in Charlottesville where the, the climate is so fragile across the country, so fragile because of COVID-19, we then have senseless death and murder. And I want to talk from a micro standpoint in Charlottesville and in central Virginia when I'm watching on Thursday on CNN and on Friday on CNN, and I'm talking about this with my wife and my friends and my family and trying to understand our role as leaders in the community, trying to understand our role as, as someone who's white and understands the concept of privilege. I'm sitting back and I'm watching the violence unfold where protests are, are, are strategically in the back end with, with groups that are involved in these protests that have nothing to do with the authentic, the authentic motivation of the protest in the beginning. We have groups going to cities that are being destructive, that are trying to incite violence and destruction. And I was terrified. I was terrified something similar was going to happen in Charlottesville, certainly over the weekend. And as we went from Friday of watching CNN and Atlanta and Minneapolis and all this stuff unfold, we go into Saturday morning. And on Saturday morning, we see that a rally is going to happen on Market Street, and everybody in the community does, in front of the police station, 3.30 on Saturday. It quickly makes waves on social media, right? And about 11 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 10 a.m., when I start seeing it going viral on social and people posting about it, I'm really scared. I'm really scared. We're still reeling, and like August 12th is so real and raw and like right in front of us and like present. A12 is so present for this community. And then I go into Saturday and I'm just thinking, oh, what's gonna happen now? And Mayor Walker, she released a statement on Saturday morning, and Mayor Walker released a statement about George Floyd's murder on Saturday morning, and Mayor Walker asked the community to breathe. And I don't agree, and I did not agree with all the statement from Mayor Walker. I did not, and I do not. But one of the things I respected was her willingness to say something in a time of uncertainty and try to, and lead. You know, she went out on a limb with this statement to try to lead a community as a mayor. Maybe the first time we've seen in 2020, certainly since COVID, maybe the first time we've seen one of our local officials go to a, 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 an open platform, an open microphone, and say what they were truly feeling. So much of what's happening with council right now is, 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 uncertainty of what to do from a leadership standpoint. And I think it, it stems from Mike Signer. Remember when Mike Signer became such a front vocal presence of A12 and it backfired on Mike Signer, the former mayor of Charlottesville? It just totally imploded on him. He tried to leverage A12, Mike did, okay? And it backfired. And I think that experience is keeping current counsel from going to the front of a controversy like COVID-19 
or like George Floyd, Floyd protests and saying, this is how we feel. But on Saturday, we saw it from Mayor Walker. She did. And then after Mayor Walker's statement, we get a joint statement from Walker and Chief Brackney and City Manager Richardson. So I'm like, how are these statements going to impact the temperature downtown? How are they going to impact what people are feeling in the pulse? But as we go there, and as we see with our eyes, people congregate and aggregate downtown in front of the police station and start to march down Market Street, past our studio in the Macklin, two Bodos in Up Preston, the energy in the protests, not only palpable, but positive. Think about it. The energy from marching from the police station on Market on Saturday afternoon down Market, past the library, past I Love Seville, past, past Fellini's, past Monsoon, past the Albemarle County Office Building, past Preston Avenue, Vinegar Hill and its history. Guys, past Lee Park, past Market Street Park. The protest goes past the park where A12 essentially originated. But on Saturday, Charlottesville and our community and Central Virginians and civilians and our friends and family, we, it was done peacefully and with, with, with strategic intent of making the presence felt not only locally, but in a strategic global effort of George Floyd, Floyd protests. We're seeing the protests not only nationally, not only globally. We saw it here in Charlottesville. But it was done in a way that was peace. And, and if you don't think this is a big deal right now, and if you're not talking about this, and if you're not sharing the stream or liking it, and hammer the like button, think 60 miles down the road. Shoot, shoot. I said shoot. 50, 55 miles down the road, right? in Richmond, Virginia, and you see a city that is, that is under curfew, that is under essentially military law, a city that's burning before our eyes, a city where, where, where folks that are not in the community are coming to the community to cause destruction, to leverage a, a, a ulterior motive or to push an ulterior motive forward. Do you not feel for the folk? I, my heart is aching for Richmond. Aching. I think we learned, I think we learned in Charlottesville, I think we learned in Charlottesville from August 12th. And August 12th is so raw and so real and so like, so much a presence in, in Seaville and in Central Virginia now, that that presence and that history and what we went through, and I was there, you were there, I was there. What we went through gave us in Seaville and Central Virginia perspective for this past weekend. And that perspective, goodness, you thank God for that perspective, and I do. And I'm getting like a little emotional here, but I'm just like so thankful whether you're a God-fearing person or not, I am. I'm so thankful that this weekend went well. And I think it's just such a testament to not only what we learned on August 12th, but the character of us as a community. And I think I, think I, give, I give Mayor Walker a lot of grief on this show, and I think it's justified. But she deserves... Tremendous applause. Her wording, I think, could have been altered. But I'm not going to go down the road now. For her to go out on a limb in a time where the community is so fragile and walking on eggs, eggshells, because of what we're seeing on CNN across the country with protests and and Mayor Walker on Saturday, in a statement asking the community to breathe, that was leadership. Someone tell her I said that. She said, she, I'm sure she's like, this guy just gives me grief. Someone, that was leadership. I think it was the first piece of leadership I have seen in 2020 that was like really confronting a crisis head on. So props to her. And props to Charlottesville. 
Now, so many different subplots from this. Jim Ryan releases a statement about the protests, and he's getting hammered on social media. Zy Bryant, and, and she's the incredibly impactful activist who matriculated and graduated from Charlottesville High School. Zy Bryant was the one who delivered the speech in Lee Park, um, I think, as, 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 a, uh, as a teenager, while well, as a student in Charlottesville High School. She talked in, in Lee Park in front of media about what these statues meant to her. She is active on social media, especially on Twitter. She's now a student at the University of Virginia where she's actively involved in a number of groups um, pushing equity and championing equity and championing um, all of us to become more open-minded. She and, and, and a lot of folks that, she's a student now, at the University of Virginia, really disenchanted with how President Ryan responded to, pre, to George Floyd's murder. And he's now under tremendous fire. He's under tremendous fire. And I think one thing President Ryan is, he, he genuinely, I think genuinely is a really good person. Really good guy. Genuinely a really good guy. His strategy from an optics and managing PR and, 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 and word choice leaves a little bit to desired. When you're the president of an institution, you're making about a million, million dollars a year, you're living in a mansion in the city of Charlottesville funded by taxpayers and tuition, and that's Cars Hill where President Ron, you're going to be under the microscope, and he is right now. He's been under the microscope for the response to COVID-19, and now this. We're in an interesting time in this community where we have such a melting pot of thought leaders and people that choose to make impacts and people that are often leading the charge. And when you have this melting pot of thought leaders, when you have folks of varying different perspectives all in one small community, you get some friction. And we're seeing that friction with the president of the university right now and how he responded to George Floyd. That's safe to say. A couple of items that happened over the weekend that I found intriguing. Rob Schilling of WNINA, talk show host, and Toby of Toby's Pawn Shop. Did you see the story? Rob Schilling and Toby of Toby's Pawn Shop suing Ralph Northrum, the governor of Virginia, suing the Commonwealth, about the requests for businesses to require customers to wear masks upon entry into their business. Interesting lawsuit materializing right there. I think the really, and I'm pro-mask, I wear them. I think one thing that happened over the weekend was anyone that was watching the protests across CNN and nationally, did anyone say, does the protest mean we don't have to wear a mask and COVID-19 isn't a thing? I felt that way when I was, when I was, you know, whether it was Saturday on Market Street in person or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Thursday on CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, whatever news station you're watching, were you not thinking, does, does this mean COVID-19 is not a thing? All these people crammed together, most not wearing masks, I'm wearing a mask, okay? So I think what you've seen is you've seen the news cycle change right before our eyes. And the news cycle and the media is pivoting its lens, and we'll pivot the camera over here with this story, Judah. It's pivoting its lens and its attention right now. And you're seeing the pivot happen from COVID to the protest nationally. My trepidation is we've done such a phenomenal job of flattening the curve We've done such a great job of managing COVID, especially in Virginia and lo especially locally. We're lo we've done a good job locally, guys. My concern is everyone's concern, all, should be all our concerns, that if we're not careful with the protests that you're going to see because of the protests, and the protests are justified, the protests are justified, I'm not marginalizing the protests, but because of the justified protest, a potential spike in COVID-19. Are you thinking that? I'm just trying to be a realist here. So the news cycle is changing. 
We went from social and digital and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat and CNN and MSNBC and Fox and CNBC and The Daily Progress and Seville and all the media we consume. We went from being spoon-fed COVID-19 24-7, 365 to now being spoon-fed COVID-19, a portion of that. I just don't want the, cons- the, the, the focus from the focus from getting out of this to, to, to not still be the prior- priority. It's a dichotomy and a dynamic and a crossroads that us as humans, it's so freaking complicated that we have to manage. Standing up and protesting as a country, the, the, the social injustices, the systematic, the systematic racism, and you saw that firsthand. They've been, all that has been magnified because of COVID-19. So that is trumping, even locally, the management of COVID-19 and the moving forward of COVID-19 from a news cycle. That makes me nervous. It makes me nervous. Because we're doing a hell of a job here. And you have students returning in August. So you've got a lot of, a lot of collisions of, of stuff happening in Charlottesville. Students returning to grounds in August. A lot of activity, 1,000 people walking shoulder to shoulder from the police station to Bodo's on Preston, past Bodo's on Preston. A lot of stuff happening here. Give the show a like and a share. We have Pete Snyder coming up, the co-founder of the Virginia 30-Day Fund. Johnny Ornelas is going to join us in the 1 o'clock hour. The guy who's the co-founder of Guadalajara on Fontaine Avenue is opening a new brand and a new restaurant in Zion's Crossroads entrepreneurialism at its finest, and I want to support it. Stephanie Rhodes, welcome to the broadcast. Um, Bon Romer, Meg Welch, hello. Andre Xavier, Christopher Eagle, hello. Guys, give it a like, give it a share. Please do that for us. A couple of things I want to get off before I go to Pete, and Pete, if you're watching, we're going to go to you shortly. Brandon Harrop, thank you for liking the show right there. It means a lot. Tim, thank you for liking the show on Crozet. Grace, I see you in Richmond. You are a supporter of the show. I'm grateful. Grace, just show, share the show on Henrico. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, James Watson. I appreciate you, James Watson. Paul Johnson, I appreciate you. Um, I saw a sponsored post in my Facebook news feed from the University of Virginia hospital system. A sponsored post, for those who don't know, brands like I Love Seville, like UVA Hospital, like Commonwealth Sky Bar, the Whiskey Jar, Citizen Burger Bar, Malloy Ford, you know, brands, those are brands, businesses can use money that they have to boost posts on Facebook and Instagram and social media. A boost amplifies the post so more people see it. You can get really technical, which is literally what I do from a day-to-day standpoint when, when managing our client rosters. You can say, I want this boosted post to go to women. Women are control the household budget, so you always want to go after women. That's a very, that's marketing, say 201. Women control the household budget. So if I'm doing a strategic boosted post campaign, and there's so many layers to this, but if I'm doing it for a client, I very much want to go after 25 to 55 or 25 to 65-year-old females within a 20 to 25-mile radius of the city of Charlottesville. Okay? 20 to 20, if you go to 25-year-old to 65-year-old females within a 25 or 30-mile radius of the city of Charlottesville, you're going to be able to control the household budget. UVA Health Systems, where I'm going with this, has a boosted post campaign that's going right now, and I've never thought I would see this. The boosted post campaign literally is, has a call to action incentivizing people for elective surgeries. That's how bad... UVA Hospital needs the elective surgeries to chop off the roughly $90 million they're, u- they're losing a month because they're not doing the elective surgeries. They're running an advertising campaign, UVA Hospital, saying, hey, guys, let's get your gallbladder taken care of. Hey, guys, you want to get that appendix looked at? Hey, guys, how are those uh, lip nodes doing? Hey, fellas, have you done that colonoscopy yet? You got to get the fingers. Come on. So it just shows you That if hospitals are having to do elective surgery advertising campaigns and that same hospital is losing $90 million a month because it's not doing that elective surgery hospital campaign, it shows you the precarious nature and the fragile state of healthcare in 2020. You add the healthcare piece to an election year, to COVID-19, to brutal murders 
across the country that are unjustifiable, certainly ones from police officers, and you have a climate across the country that just needs like 15 Valium and, and, and a couple of beers or something, right? I mean, how freaking fragile. How freaking fragile. The positives you potentially have, the positives you potentially, add the 40 million people unemployed. Add the fact that 25% of Americans are underpaid or undervalued. Good God, good Lord. 25% of the people in the country have had their pay cut of some capacity. 40 million Americans don't have a job. COVID-19 has hit the country. George Floyd, murder by police in Minneapolis. Violence across the globe. An election year. An election year with one of the people in the office, half the country hate his guts. You have the recipes and the equation for, dyna- for, for, for Darden Town on the 4th of July and a 30-minute grand finale. That's the place for fireworks, by the way. Darden Town Park with the family and a cold beverage in the Yeti cup. That's the place. Give the show a like and a share. Pete Snyder coming up. Judah, we're going to have the headshot ready for Pete. If the video's not working, you got that ready to rock and roll? Judah Wickhauer is our fabulous director. This show is brought to you by Interstate Pests and Service Companies and Scott Wagner Chiropractic and Sports Medicine. Let's give them some love, please, Judah. Interstate Pest and Service Companies has four generations of family that are actively involved with the community, supporting charities, supporting little leagues, doing the best by their employees and their customers. Four generations of family at Interstate Pest and Service Companies. We are lucky to have them. Just like Scott Wagner. Dude, I've been working with Dr. Wagner for almost 10 years. It was one doctor, Dr. Wagner, and a couple of people up front. He has five chiropractic, six chiropractors under his tutelage, and an army of chiropractic assistants ready to help you. Chiropractic care, sports medicine, physical therapy, Dr. Wagner changing people's lives. Judah, I'm going to reach out to Pete Snyder. I'm excited to meet this guy. Uh, Skype is ringing right now. He is the co-founder of the Virginia 30-Day Fun, Pete Snyder. Pete, we have you live for Charlottesville, Central Virginia, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world. You're on the I Love Seville Network. We have your fabulous headshot on screen where you're looking um, super dapper, um, super slick, super sharp. I'm going to get out of your way, Pete. Why don't you introduce yourself to the viewing public, please? Gary, well, look, uh, my name is Pete Snyder. Uh, I am a new Charlottesville resident. Uh, That said, I certainly love Charlottesville. Uh, My wife and I moved here a little over a year ago from Northern Virginia, and about five weeks ago, just seeing our world crumbling around us, uh, we started a nonprofit, uh, our first, um, called the Virginia 30 Day Fund. And really what we seek to do is provide a lifeline to small businesses that are struggling out there um, to try to get them over the hump between the here and now and when our economy opens back open. So in about five weeks, we have funded now over 300 small businesses across the Commonwealth and uh, about 20 right here in the greater Charlottesville area. Oh, that's amazing. 300 small businesses across the Commonwealth, 20 in the area. So J.R. Hadley, um, friend of this program, J.R. Hadley, the visionary behind Boylan Heights. He sold Boylan Heights. J.R. Hadley involved with Champion Brewing Company as the guy who's spearheading hospitality and F&B for that empire. He helped set up this interview. And Pete, he said, A, you're legit people. And second, he said, this guy's just helping businesses across Virginia, and more people need to know about him in Charlottesville. So how do we get involved? What kind of financial levels are we talking? What's the payment plan? Everyone's tight on dinero right now as a small business owner. COVID-19 is kicking us in the you-know-where here. I'm going to get out of your way on all those questions, Pete. (laughs) Well, first and foremost, JR is just simply awesome. Uh, Just a terrific friend, one of the first folks we met when we came into town, and I absolutely love that guy. And I'm thrilled that JR has joined our advisory board at the Virginia 30-Day Fund. And he is also, because he's so connected in the hospitality and restaurant industry, has brought several struggling small businesses our way. So we're very grateful for JR's leadership and help. And, you know, how do you get involved? Well, one of two things, which is if you have a small business that's struggling or you know folks who do, please send them our way to va 
VA30dayfund.com. That's VA30dayfund.com and have them apply. Um, what we have are, are totally forgivable $3,000 loans that we do not expect to see a dime from at any time whatsoever. So this is just help for people who need it. Um, secondly, if you're sitting on the sidelines as our world's falling apart and you want to help but don't know how, please come to our website. Please donate any number. You're, you're, you're right, Jerry. Money is tight for everyone. But anything you can do, $3, $30, $300, $3,000 sponsors one business. If you want to do that, we'd love it. You can you could keep it in the community here in Seville. And, um, you know, we, we believe in the coming weeks because of the mass systems failure at really every level out there that we're going to have to, we're only intended to be around for 30 days. We're going to be around for 60, 90, 110, 20, whatever it takes to help out small businesses. And we'll be funding hundreds and hundreds more in the weeks to come. I love it. Um, the website, VA. 30dayfund.com va30dayfund.com I see six states watching the program and a hell of a lot of people across the Commonwealth $3,000 loans totally forgivable from the Virginia 30 day fund let me you you've had some success okay you're a, you're a, an advertising guy a branding guy a media guy new media strategies um, a company you founded you had some success with you're involved as in, in, in the angel space with this Disruptor Capital. You have your feet and your hands in in, 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 in politics, where you've considered an impact at the the upper level within the Commonwealth of Virginia. So you got a lot of balls in the air. You're an influencer in Virginia, without question. Let me throw this to you before we get to some other topics. Why go down this road of the three thousand uh, dollar unforgivable loans? Why go down that road? Well, Jerry, you know, of all things, when this pandemic hit, my wife and I had our five-year-old in Orlando at Disney World for her first time, for her spring break, her first time in Disney World. Now, Disney World is the absolute last place that you want to be when a sure. global pandemic breaks out. So we hightailed it out of, out of there, um, came immediately back here to Charlottesville, didn't even go to the house first, went to the grocery store because we thought we we're going to be in lockdown for a while. So we got provisions. We spent the first couple days figuring out, is everyone healthy? Meaning, did I hear you cough and are we okay? I mean, we just came out of the belly of the beast in Disney World. Then the second couple days were, you know, our businesses, are they doing all right? I mean, they were taking, some were taking on water more than others, but we were doing better than most out there. And then we looked at ourselves and said, oh my gosh, the world's falling apart, the world's on fire. How do we help and what do we do? So Jerry, I really view, and my wife and I view it, that we're at war right now, right? I mean, I'm 47 years old. We've been at war four or five times as a country, but that's usually only felt by one or two percent of the population, right? We've never had something that touches everybody. And I think there are two fronts to the war. One is the health and wellness front, which right here in Charlottesville, the UVA health system, we have the heroes that are doctors, nurses, surgeons, first responders that are literally saving lives every day. Um, but then you also have an economic war, an economic front to the war, that is savaging small businesses. My wife and I don't have a medical background, but we are small business owners. We understand that ecosystem. So we enlisted in that front, and that's what that was the genesis of the Virginia 30 Day Fund. I love it. I love it. It embodies the mission that we want to at I Love Seville, um, where we try to embody the best of Charlottesville, Virginia, by championing the small business community, because we understand the small business community in any city, in any town, in any community, the backbone of such communities. I'm gonna throw this to you. We have 40 million, roughly, just under 40 million folks, Pete, unemployed. 25% of Americans have had their pay cut in some capacity. One of four, it's freaking scary. We have COVID-19, a pandemic we've never seen, a historical pandemic. We have the brutal murder of George Floyd that has justifiably ignited protest across the country. On top of that, Pete, a freaking election year um, when it's Biden and Trump, and I don't even want to go down that road. Both those guys ignite a lot of emotions, and we'll leave it at that. We have a lot of catalysts, a lot of things happening, for lack of better phrase. 
Give me your State of the Union of American economy and where it's going for the rest of 2020, certainly Q3, Q3, Q4, and going into 2021. Sure, Jerry. Well, look, first and foremost, you cannot be an entrepreneur if you're not an optimist Amen. at heart. That's just simply true. Now, that said, I believe things economically are going to get worse before they get better. And again, that's why we haven't folded our tent at Virginia 30-Day Fund. We were only supposed to be around for you know, a couple weeks. Now it's going to be a much longer period of time. Um, so I think things are going to get worse before they get better. Um, that said, I will never bet against the United States of America. I will not bet against I'm long on Virginia, long on the United States of America. Uh, and really, one of the heartening things that we have seen is that we're told so often about how divided we are. And in some cases, we're on the news right now, you're seeing those divisions. But in our work at Virginia 30 Day Fund, Republicans and Democrats have stopped wearing their jerseys. They've taken them off. So we have a fully bipartisan operation going on, apolitical Republicans and Democrats working together. Mark Warner has been invaluable to us. Um, you know, Kirk Cox, former Speaker of the House, has been absolute all-star. Everyone's rolling up their sleeves and pitching in to save small businesses. So that's, you know, every single day we are having some form of heartening story like that. And uh, so that's why I'm optimistic long, uh, long run. Um, but, you know, we have a hell of a lot of work to do in the, in the weeks. To I'm come. bullish as well. Um, we'll welcome some folks watching the show. I see four folks in Northern Virginia and Richmond, Virginia Beach, D.C., Arlington, Asheville, Nashville and Miami watching the show. Now, let's welcome the Richmond Times Dispatch to the program. Um, I'm going to throw this topic to you. I'm also bullish America. I'm along America. The American spirit, the capitalistic entrepreneurial spirit has a pop of proof of performance. We see historical trends that backs up the statement we just made right there. That being said, I agree with you. The short term Q3, Q4 is going to be rocky. How do we keep it from being, say, uh, you know, not super, <laughs> the Andes Mountains? How, how do we keep the peaks and the valleys from being so volatile in the next, say, two quarters, Pete? Sure. Look, I think it, I think we need to keep people employed. And that's the, the re very reason why we're doing what we're doing right now in giving a lifeline to these small businesses. We ask them to keep their people on the payroll because we need to have an economy to come back to when we bounce back out of this. And in order to do that, you need people that are employed. We, um, we funded a, a welder, a welding shop, Lawless Welding in Martinsville. And the, the proprietor, a guy named Chris Lawless, what a great name for a welder, right? I mean, this, guy, this guy's a badass. And he said to me, he said, Pete, thank you so much for this. This will have 10 guys uh, on the payroll, and this is going to help me keep them on for several weeks longer because here's the deal. It's so bad in Southside. If these guys go on unemployment, I'm never getting them back off. So that's the, you know, we need to continue to help prop up our small businesses so we're doing that through these forgivable loans. Other folks can do it through whether it's takeout or on, or you know or or delivery for the for restaurants for shops if they have online uh, options of buying. We need to do everything we can to keep the backbone of our community in Charlottesville and across the Commonwealth stabilized. So. You know, if you have disposable income, start spending it and helping these folks Well out. said. Well said. COVID-19, guys, made the small businesses that we love to support non-essential. And the government made Walmart and Target and Lowe's and brands of the big box nature essential. And as a result, a 120-day period, the businesses, the brands that we love to support are crumbling. And we don't want to return to a world where the, the marketplace and market share is dominated by names like Amazon and Target and Walmart. That's not a world I live in. That's why I think the Virginia 30-day fund is something that needs to be spotlighted. $3,000 loans, totally unforgivable. VA30dayfund.com. You're going to run for governor? Virginia wants to know, Pete. You're going to run for governor? Jerry, politics is the exact last thing on my mind Good right save. now. I don't give... <laughs> I don't give a crap about any of that right now. I just don't. And it's, just, it's actually a very freeing, wonderful thing uh, when you're not, you know, focused on the stupid political machinations of 
every comma and, 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 and paragraph, and you're actually just focused on results. Uh, I will say that we have had a systems failure at every single level uh, of our system yeah. right now. Um, it is it is mind blowing to me. You know, I've a I've been a long time investor at a company called Leadberry. Based Paul Tribble, baby, Virginia. I know Paul Tribble well. I went to Walsingham Academy and William and Mary. I'm going to ask you about Paul's Deli and the Green Leaf very soon. Pete Snyder, <laughs> Paul Tribble, <laughs> Paul it. Tribble went to Hampton Roads Academy. He was a rival of ours. I grew up with Paul Tribble. Ask him about Jerry Miller. Leadberry is a legit brand. I love the clothes. I love the company. I love that you got in that that company early. You were smart. Well, Jerry, thank you for that. Paul's a fantastic visionary leader, uh, but I got to tell you, it was heartbreaking on Saturday night, and yesterday was an awful day in the Snyder household. Um, we have been longtime investors in Leadbury. I've been on their board for eight years. Their storefront was completely oh. obliterated and destroyed in the riots. Their entire Broad Street um, shop was looted and all the merchandise taken out of the first floor. What merchandise was left was covered in the blood of looters. I have pictures. It is vile. It is horrible. Look, you know, what I can't understand why people have cannot say, those in charge can't say that, you know what, what happened in Minnesota is absolutely wrong. You, we can no longer tolerate having our black citizens murdered by law enforcement. And we cannot tolerate violence in our protests. Protests are an important part of the fabric of America. Hell, we started with it with the Boston Tea Party, right? You know, there, there was, look, I, I'm a Republican. I'm a conservative. I believe in our Second Amendment rights. There was a very peaceful, large um, uh, protest that happened earlier this spring um, that, you know, I think the governor sent a message that, oh my gosh, Virginia's going to fall apart. And, you know, you had 60,000 people, not a single arrest in that. Um, there has been a, just a, a, a lack of, of leadership on how this we're allowed to have looting and burning in our cities. It doesn't make any sense at all. In Boston, you, you know, we've got to stop. The, we've got to stop the, our law enforcement murdering our own citizens, and we have to stop having violence and destruction when we're protesting things. Period. Well said, um, Boston Tea Party. He's exactly right, guys. Tax protesters. Um, dressed up as Native Americans during the Boston Tea Party. They boarded a ship, and they destroyed large amounts of tea by throwing it in the ocean. That was one of the first protests in American history, the Boston Tea Party. All right, throw this to you, Pete, before I start asking you about sandwiches and the green leaf in Paul's Deli, because, man, I love those subs, <laughs> baby. Uh, I'm going to throw this to you here. Richmond, dude, I was watching live streams on social. I'm watching Mayor Stoney. I'm watching the, the, the fire chief crying at a press conference because freaking multifamily house, a multifamily unit or multifamily structure is ignited, set on fire. There's a freaking little kid in the multi-unit structure. And when the fire fireman and the fire truck comes to put out the freaking fire, the protesters kept the fire truck from going through. Fortunately, the child's life was saved. But the fire, the fire chief is crying in front of the media, getting choked up because of this violence. Richmond, Virginia, Pete, I mean, I, I, have you ever seen the city like this before? What, 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 what do we do here? Uh, Jerry, no, I've never seen it before. And, you know, my wife first and I did not live in Charlottesville when those horrible riots. But I do know there's a, a common theme in both, which is just a simple lack of leadership. Why did we not have, you know... The, the protesters in Richmond were signaling for days. You could see this on Twitter, that what they were planning on doing. Most of them came from outside of outside of Virginia, just like of what happened in, in Charlottesville. But we can plan for this. And why wasn't the National Guard there? You know, I was talking to a Washington Post reporter yesterday, um, and I was asking her about what she was experiencing as she saw Leadbury be trashed. And I said, you know, did you was the police around? She said the police could not were not anywhere near. Here, so you know those in charge. Their their number one responsibility is to protect us, right? You, you, we have to protect our lives, protect our homes and our citizens. And there's just been an abject failure on every single level of that. So no, it's sad. It's it's a it's a horrible horrible time. That said, 
again, I'm an optimist. Me too. I believe that we, we can learn from this. Hopefully, um, there is a lot that, you know, look, we, we need to end the execution and murder of our black citizens by law enforcement, period. Can't be tolerated anymore whatsoever. We also need to end the notion that you can burn our cities, destroy our businesses, hurt people in maim just because you're a, a woke millennial um, with, that, that is, is rightfully upset about what happened in Minnesota. But those things don't go together. You can have social change and do it peacefully. Dude, uh, I'm, I'm, if, if, JR, if JR Hadley was here right now, I would be giving him a flying chest bump, Pete Snyder, because you're, you're spitting fire and dropping truth and knowledge bombs right here on this program, and I'm grateful for your time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this question to you. I want to give you a final word, but before I do, Paul's or Greenleaf, hot holly or hot gringo from a sub standpoint in Williamsburg, Virginia. He went to William & Mary, guys. Oh come on, Holly, all day long. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw. I'm an old guy because I was actually a college deli disciple. But I love and appreciate Paul's. Um, I was a former wrestler. That back when you know Glenn Gormley owned the Greenleaf and it was run, all the wait staff were wrestlers. Oh, yeah. So uh, that was a place where I could get in uh, underage early, uh, and it was a hard thing to do at that time. But uh, I knocked plenty back and in the leaf and, and college deli. And, you know, I, I love what uh, Pete's doing with Paul's. Uh, so just that, that is the uh, danger triangle right. for, uh, for me and everyone. at Williams Amen, there. brother. I, I was hopping the fence at 14 um, at college deli, the stone fence. Um, and then <laughs> college deli getting in at 17. Those were some crazy times. All right. Final, final word. You've crushed this interview, dude. You were so damn good. I, I hope to do this again with you. Anywhere you want to go, you have 12 Facebook pages. You have five states, a lot of Virginians watching and listening to you right now. Show's yours. Anywhere you want to go, Pete. Hey, Jerry, look, first and foremost, thank you for having me on. I, I love what you're doing. I love the passion that you have here. And you're, you're damn right. I love, I love Seville. So this is a you know, perfect platform. Um, you know, the one thing that we didn't talk about is, is the, the pay it forward aspect of, of what we're doing with Virginia 30 Day, which is about three days before I launched, I was talking to a friend of mine, Ben Tribbett, who if you're, you know, interwebs people know him as not Larry Sabato. Okay, he's a democratic like master of disaster. Anyway, I, I gave him the two minute drill on what, our, what we were up to with Virginia 30 Day. And he said, yeah, Pete, I don't know about that. And I said, Ben, what are you talking about? This is going to be great. We're going to help small businesses. He said, yeah, but um, come on. You're, you're, you're an entrepreneur. You know that entrepreneurs, they might give to charity, but they don't want to be charity. They'll take a lifeline, but, but no, that's, gonna be, that's not going to work. You have to, requ you have to offer a pay-it-forward clause to these forgivable loans, which means – you know, hey, look, we don't expect a dime back, but Jerry, if in six months or nine months or a year, you're back on your feet and you can pay back the $3,000 so we could give it to someone else in need, um, that's what we ask of folks. And it, that has been the most popular uh, sell point of what we're doing. You know, entrepreneurs are, are proud people. Um, they don't want, they don't like being in tight spots. They will accept a hand when uh when offered to them but you know they don't want to be a charity case so every single time i call people up and tell them that they've been accepted 60 percent of the time it's emotional wow. and you have tears over over three thousand dollars um because it's so bad out there but at the end of every conversation you always get a thank you and folks will say hey look i just want to let you know before we get off the line i'm going to pay this for wow and we've already had six months before I ever expected, we already had one pay it forward moment. I had an entrepreneur call me up and said, hey, Pete, you know, I got a PPP loan. I made a couple decisions. We've won back two new two clients and, and we're in good shape. I want to give it back so you can help someone else out. And that's been the most magical, magical stuff that we're seeing. The great, you know. People are good at heart. Yes, we're seeing evil on TV. Yes, we're seeing evil in these riots. Yes, we saw evil in that murder in Minnesota. But damn it, people are good. And they're doing good things every day.
So I, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share that. You're, you're great, man. You did great today. I appreciate the insight, respect the emotion, the vulnerability, and the courage you just showed there. We'll reach out again, Pete. Thank you kindly for the time. VA30dayfund.com, VA30dayfund.com. $3,000 loans, totally forgivable. Charlottesville in Central Virginia. It's a, it's, it's a branch for you. Thank you, Pete. Thanks, Gary. Take care, my All man. Right, take care. We're going to welcome uh, Johnny Hornellis to the program. He's opening up a new brand in Zion's Crossroads uh, in a matter very soon. Uh, he's going to join us on the show. Shoot, Johnny, we're going to go to you here in about 90 seconds. I want to dot the I's and cross the T's on the interview with Pete. First thing, yes, yes, our country, yes, our country, America, yes, founded on a courageous spirit, a spirit willing to ignite a war to get its freedom from Britain and England. Um, yes, the Boston Tea Party was an organized protest, one of the first in the country, where tax protesters put on Native American disguises and boarded a ship and threw tea in the ocean to protest taxes from England in the colonies. Yes, America and the spirit of our country founded and its foundation and its roots built on protests, and we want to lead the way, we want to be the charge, we're the leaders. It's a fine line, though, between the protests going to violence and then the violence superseding or trumping the narrative that you want out there. The narrative is about George Floyd and the senseless murder of a Minneapolis policeman killing a black man on the street while other policemen watch. That's what needs to be spotlighted. That is authentic, is credible, that deserves the attention, that should be in our history books. What you don't want in the history books is Floyd's death ignited violence across the country that led to fire and murder and storefront damage and inner city communities being destroyed and possibly facing years if decades not of repair and recovery. That's where the narrative is going. It's a fine line. It's a fine line. We'll talk about that um, as we mature here on the I Love Seville show as this show grows older. Jude, I'm going to reach out to Johnny now. And Johnny, the, it's ringing. Johnny Ornelas hard-working man in restaurants. You know him from the Guadalajara brand, a fabulous brand. He's one of the co-owners of Guadalajara on Fontaine. He, eh, through some sweat equity, some hard work, some serious cojones, is opening up a restaurant in Zion's Crossroads that I think is going to absolutely crush it. Judah, we have him on the line. Do we have your green light to welcome him to the show? We do. Thank you, Judah. Johnny, you're live, my friend. Thank you for joining us. Um, before we go to the new brand and the new business, um, give you an opportunity to comment over some of the stuff that's transpired over the weekend in Charlottesville. Um, and also, say, Richmond. Um, not, I mean, w crazy stuff's happening. Fortunately, very peaceful in a city that you love over the weekend in Charlottesville. The show is yours, Johnny. Anywhere you want to go on that topic. Awesome. Thanks, Jerry, for having me again. You know, love what you do. Great supporter. Thank you. Uh, you're a great supporter for us, too, as well. Uh, yeah, you know, starting this um, incident has been, it, it's rough. You know, uh, we, I heard, you know, Nakai Walker speaking on Saturday, and it, it's scary. You know, uh, I was actually on, uh, on August, we were actually in the hospital with my daughter being born. So we got kicked out the back door. You know, you can go home, but, you know, with the whole riots and everything going on, you're going out the back door. That was 8 12? That was August 12th? 8 8, 8, my daughter was born. Wow. So we left 8, we left 8 12 from the hospital. Literally, you know, basically being escorted out. But uh, it, it's scary to think of how everything was going to evolve. We didn't know what was going to happen on Saturday. You know, as soon as I saw, I saw it, I'm like, man. You know, what's going to happen downtown? What's going to happen in that whole area? You know, is this going to blow up into something that we're looking again at what we did in August? And uh, I, I was just super glad. Even though the restaurants are, you know, 
well, Fontaine is away from that area. Still this morning, my head, as I'm driving in, I'm like, did anything happen? Did anybody go crazy in their downtown location? Did anything, you know, it, 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 it's, uh, it's, it's a touchy subject. And uh, I, I just, I did look at the news and how Richmond was being treated. And it, it's just heartbreaking, especially for a lot of these locations that have been closed. And they're trying to open. I know. They're trying to get over the hump of, you know, COVID to try at least do something. And it's now, you know, they show up in the morning or they get the phone call overnight that they can't, they can't do what they were planning on doing anymore. So well said. I, he's so, he's so right. We literally, even in Richmond, Richmond just entered phase one. Richmond entered phase one for the businesses to reopen at the same time, literally, couple days before the city is being destroyed it's oh it's heartbreaking here all right let's we'll go positive um i love you your family uh i love your restaurant fontaine you guys are opening a new brand a new restaurant in zion's crossroads i'll get out of your way give give us the nitty-gritty yeah nitty-gritty so this is something very exciting especially now we've been at this for two years you know, uh, trying to get into that market out there that's been just blowing up out in Zion's Crossroads, looking for something, you know, new and hit kind of, I mean, we're still, you know, trying to hit that other market, you know, because here we're going to be marketing local breweries, local uh, wineries, you know, we're going to be hitting local brews, all that stuff, and a little tweak on our food, too. Because this is, you know, a different brand. Um, and, you know, my family, my immediate family, my brothers, my his family, and, and my parents, we've kind of just been searching for that opportunity to kind of, let's see what else we can do. Um, and, you know, try to hit separate sites. Sep still in the community, but just a little... I, I think it's genius. Um, I, I think we know Charlottesville and Almoral County, you guys have a lot of market share with your location strategically positioned. It's also very competitive in Charlottesville and Almoral County with restaurants. Zion's Crossroads, however, very much untapped. We also know there's tremendous water infrastructure in place in that Zion's Crossroads area for massive new development. So what he and his family are betting on is that they can get their restaurant and their brand up and running before this massive development Development comes there and he's going to be the go-to Mexican food brand for the entire quarter and I think he's going to freaking crush it. Um, give us the dynamic and the breakdown of the brand. The who, what, when, where, why. I freaking love the logo behind you. So whoever did that has some, seriously, I do graphic design and advertising for a living. That is professional. Someone had some vision putting that together. It is legit. It, it is, man. We, we, we love it. It's uh, you know, a good friend of my brother's that uh, he went to school with and he went into design work and we've used them before and it's like, let's throw it out to him, see what he can do. Let's see, you know, and it was like the first thing he popped in and we're like, yeah, this, this, this is, it's clean. Yeah. And it, it, it makes, it makes a point, you know, and, uh, but yeah, this, this brand, it's something, it's going to be, like I said, something different. Our restaurant, we're looking at close to, what was it? It's like about 280 seats. 280? Yeah. Holy nut. You have, your, how many do you have? You have on Fontaine, what do you have, like 35 or 40? <laughs> yeah. You're going from 30. How many do you have on Fontaine? Yeah, it's about, it's four, it's actually 60, 65 over count the patio. You are almost 5Xing your covers and the seat capacity that you're good for you, dude. You got some cojones. I'm impressed here. Yeah, our bar and our patio, it's, I think, 85. Nice. Yeah, so, and that's one thing we're trying to market in that area. We're trying to give that area something, somewhere to go. Yeah, it you doesn't know. have one, really. Live music. Yeah. We talk about local brews. We don't want to take away from, you know, King's Family and uh, Chisholm and, you know, Devil's Backbone and Bull Rock, but we want to bring those to them. Yeah. You know, there's that community there that maybe doesn't want to make the drive out that way. We'll probably bring growlers out. You know, you get your growlers, you get your fills, you get your food, and, you know, 
it's it, your daily drive even now to Orange. We get there's a lot of traffic there through Orange. Oh yeah, dude, you're gonna crush. I'm getting questions coming in here, guys. Live on 12 Facebook pages. If you have questions for Johnny, just jump it in the feed. This question, and I was gonna ask this, this is a good one. This is from Louise. She's watching in Zion's Crossroads at Lake Monticello right now. Are you guys in the old burrito and Lido spot? Yes, we are taking both spots. Good for you. So you're taking burrito and Lido's pizza. You knock down the wall between those two units. You Everything's gone. You combine them. Yes. God, I gone. love it. I freaking love it. When are you? Okay, this this is getting hammered at me. I'm getting DMs left and right. When is the grand opening, dude? We are hoping uh, everything goes well. We're looking at uh, hopefully end of August. Nice. You know, and uh, we'll you know we'll definitely have a uh, soft opening. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be top of my list to come over and uh, I'm there. sit down and uh, throw a few back. Dude, I live on the uh, eastern side of Albemarle County, just a hop, skip, and a jump from Zion's Crossroads. The eastern side of Albemarle County is even tremendously underserved. I think you're going to get that eastern Keswick side going to your restaurant. I think you guys are going to freaking crush it right here. Let me throw this to you. Compare and contrast and anywhere you want to go here how this is going to be different from what we see with your successful operation on Fontaine. We are, again, we're, we're still going to be big on family oriented, you know, okay. This brand has been completely family oriented. We've kept everything, you know, kind of not low key, but just more traditional type deal. Uh -huh. We're going to hit the market a little bit different over there. Like I said, we're hitting all local brews, everything live music out in the patio. And the food is going to have a tweak too, to it. The food is going to be some of your, uh, you know, kind of same dishes, but we are, it's one of the restaurants we're actually getting a char grill on there. So there's going to be different types of more of the local, like your corn on the cob. Nice. Mexican corn on the cob. And we're trying to hit a lot of appetizers too. So like if you're coming out there for a bar atmosphere or just to hang out, a bunch of little tiny things that, you know, people are going to be able to select and slightly different flavors, slightly different toppings. Um, we're trying to hit more of the kind of on the California style evolution of Mexican food of what they've done. So uh, it's been a lot of things in our minds and in our heads that we've been, me and especially me and my brother thinking, oh, I wish we could do this. We wish we could do this. You know, but you got to keep certain brands the way they are. Oh, totally, you know? I totally understand what you're saying. You say no more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you just want autonomy. You just want a little more control of the vision and the outcome is all you're doing here. Exactly. Yeah, it totally makes sense. I totally get what's happening. Um, all right, how, how, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me throw this to you. How many people in your circle of trust, and your circle of trust has some very intelligent people, how many people in that circle of trust have said, we're opening a restaurant in COVID-19? I've said that. Okay, I, was, I mean, can I say you're opening a restaurant in COVID-19, Johnny? You know, if it was something that would have been brought up like a few months back, hey, let's let's open up a restaurant and and let's go for it, I probably would have kicked back. You would have and, said, pump the brakes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but being we kind of had this start initiate before COVID nineteen, you know, we had to, like I said two years ago, we've been trying to do this, and now you know, it fell in our naps, and it's like, and Keith Smith, man, he's He's a baller. He's been helping us with this, like, day in, day out. You know, how can we do this? Hey, let's move this way. So he's really been pushing us. And um, now it's one of those things like, okay, it's here. It's like, really? We can now move forward with this? And it's just like, all right, let's sit down. Let's hunker down. You know, we got to make the best of it. You know, we don't know what it's going to be like in August and September. And we just hope for the best and, uh, you know, put our – you know, put her heads down and just go forward for it and uh, work the, the hardest we can as, as we've been all these years. I love it. And even more. I love it. And I love Keith Smith, guys. Keith Smith of Real Talk, Tuesdays and Fridays on this network. Um, he's a phenomenal real estate agent. I can see him talking to you and your family with that Brooklyn accent right now. He's like, yep. the, the water is there. The water is there for more development coming. This is a good dude. And he, you're making the right call, dude. You're, this is so, so smart. You guys are going to crush here. All right, let me do this and get out of your way. Final word for you to go anywhere you want. 
You got a lot of people watching. You can talk about anything you want, restaurant, anything at all. Um, your grand opening, I'll give you some time to think. You're thinking potentially at the end of August. It's going to be, yeah. guys, in the Lido's Pizza Burrito Spots um, right there off the exit, a phenomenal location. I've driven by there uh, in the last week. They have a patio that's legit with outdoor seating where they can have a band. You know they're going to have damn good margarita and food that's priced fairly and cold beers. I think this is going to be a hot spot in that Zion's Crossroads um, quarter that's blowing up. Johnny, the show is yours. Anywhere you want to go, give us some, give us some fire, baby. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, again, thank you for having me. You know, it's, it's an honor to be on your show. Um, I've been following you for a while and, you know, love what you guys do. Thank you. Um, and the support that you guys give us uh, here in Charlottesville. And um, we hope that we can come into Zion's Crossroads and you do the same thing and feel, uh, we know we're going to feel the same love in that area. Um, and we're hoping for the best. And we're not leaving Charlottesville behind. You know, we're still here. We're still strong. We're still pushing forward, getting through this. And hopefully with, uh, you know, this new thing that's progressed since Thursday, we can, at Charlottesville, we can push forward too, just like we did on Saturday. You know, we, we got we to gotta walk with our heads up and actually make something count for what we're doing, not just make another effect that gives you a different storyline, like you said. You know, let's, let's, let's talk through this. Let's make this work. Let's make a difference instead of making the wrong difference. We want Charlottesville to grow, so we, we got to stay strong. We got to do it right. Love it. I love it. Support this guy. Support this family. Support this brand. I freaking love the logo. And, and he, guy, he brings it for the live stream with the brandy behind him. Johnny, you're legit, dude. Uh, we'll be there in the grand opening. Uh, we'll be there a couple times, literally a couple times a month. We live like 15 minutes away from you, um, from that exit. Um, thank you. Thank you. You have a good one, dude. All right, buddy. Thank right. you. Johnny, crush it. I love, I love, I love uh, local people having success. I love local people having success. I love it. I love it. And when we start seeing, you know, um, uh, Hunter Smith and, and, and Craig Hartman, Hunter Smith owns Champion Brewing Company, Craig Hartman of Barbecue Exchange, they have formed a partnership in Gordonsville where they're going to build Champion Ice House, kind of like a brewery and food situation in Gordonsville. That's happening in COVID. We see Johnny opening in COVID. I, I, I guess where I'm the temperature, I think, is changing. The temperature is changing for the good. It's changing for the good. I want to close on a couple things before we let you go. Today's been a phenomenal program. Pete Snyder, thank you for joining us. VA30dayfund.com. If you're a small business owner, you're hurting right now, and $3,000 can help you, and $3,000 can help any small business. VA30dayfund.com. VA30dayfund.com. $3,000 loans, totally forgivable. Go there. Thank you, Pete Snyder, for coming on the program. Thank you, Johnny Ornales, for joining us on the show and support his new restaurant in Zion's Crossroads. I'm going to close with this. I Love Seville and the mission of this network is to, breed, to bring positivity and hope and knowledge and approachability and, and content that appeals to you and applies to your life and where you live. And then you digest the content we're covering, and you guys can make your own opinions about the content. But the primary mission is positivity and hope. And I'll close on this note. If we can come together on a Saturday afternoon at 3.30 in Charlottesville in the heart of the town on Market Street, in front of a police station. And if we can come together in front of a police station as a group, and if we can navigate the dynamic of a protest in front of a police station that easily could have gone toward volatile like Richmond, but instead went to peace in Charlottesville, and the only, we're 60 miles apart. If we can navigate that and do it peacefully and have an impact, then we can na navigate so much in Charlottesville. We can navigate so much. We can do so much. 
that is a glimmer of hope. That is a glimmer of hope, right? It's got to be. It's got to be. I'm Jerry Miller. It's the I Love Seville Show.